What a maneuver! We have another Water Osui with 26th place, Corey Aguilard. Corey, of course, won, I believe, the Origins. Yeah, it should be the Origins RLE playing a racer head. But if I'm not mistaken, qualified at Nats playing Water Osui. So we're back on this. He played a racer head day one and now is on Water Osui again. And the first thing that comes out is four recovery time so no plus ultra on this list we have four recovery time that makes me think that blocking is just not super popular right now that blocking is not uh not really the game plan and i think that's really interesting because also used to be so so good at it just based off of like rescue completed and ice gliding and surviving the final which are all here but the attacks are just too fast. They're just tuned up. So we went for the four recovery time. This could also be a meta read on the hardened chops. We saw a bunch of hardened chops coming out. Maybe Corey fought against those earlier on in the format, right? Like Eraser Head fucking hates hardened chop. So this could be something to deal with that. But then also on top of that, I think a lot of it, people were expecting Petty Squabble Bird. And just like petty squabbles in general, but bird's basically like the best user of it. The only like really like intentional user of it most of the time. So this could help with that. So yeah, right off the bat, it looks like we're not uh, we're not getting the block too much. So um, that's uh, that's interesting. We saw two and two from Brandon Jones, and now we're just seeing four recovery time. So. Uh, the attack lamp super basic, four of everything except heat wave, which not the choice I would make, but we, we prioritize the breaker blocks and that's fine. No cannon blast, that's fine. Um, but four freezer burn, four tongue smack this time, but this time we have frog kick and maybe that's why the heat waves aren't four of. They're four non-ranged attacks, but you know, this is a card that I really like. I think you kind of have to play it in Asui, especially with Dark Shadow Ruin running around. I'm a huge, huge fan of this card. Uh, it makes attacks, like attack strings, like very, very interesting for Osui 2. It's it's super annoying, but uh, no Tongue Whip. What the fuck happened to Tongue Whip? Where's the Tongue Whips? What's, go what's going on with Osui's, man? Where's the Tongue Whips? What, 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 why, are, why are we playing? Are we playing tongue smacks over tongue? Why aren't we just killing motherfuckers, man? I don't know. What's the block ratio? We could have used it. I don't know. Yeah, we're prioritizing uh, stun over card pool clog now. It's it's interesting. It's very interesting. I I I I I don't know. But so then we go to the three diffs and. It's four prone to try eyes and two rescue completed. So we don't have card pull clogging on offense, right? Like we don't have hung whip and sticky balls to just get things started and punish everything. So it's pretty interesting. I mean, freezer burn is a nutty fucking card. So I guess freezer burn just kind of takes the spot because it does more stuff on average. It like has uh, a more control, more interaction based kind of a thing, like, or at least preventing interaction, really. So, very interesting to me. Very interesting to see, you know, no mid attacks ever. You'll never catch Oswee playing a mid attack in her fucking life. Um, <laughs> so, there's that, I guess. But yeah, very interesting to see the four frog kick, to see the four freezer burn, but no tongue whips on like any of these Oswee decks. But we might have finally creeped that card out. We might have finally creeped out uh, DLC Osui attacks. So, very interesting. But these are our three days. Four of exhaust. It is a big deal. Exact same number of wall cling, which I like to see. But the face shields are sighted again because we can't block, right? Like, all of this information is telling me that blocking is bad. This information is telling me that, like, the best players in the game who are fine with playing defense are recognizing how hard it is to play defense. Uh, two irrefutable mained, but none in the side. 
two frozen and three feeling cute. So these are fitting like a lot of the same roles in the same block zones. Um, you know, just kind of doubling up with those. Three struggling with studies, three ice gliding, four tape, like a lot of the same numbers here. Four basic training is cool. And then we see a split here. So very, very similar to Brandon Jones's list, if you guys saw that. Um, a little bit different on the attack lineup. He was all in with like ranged and going heat wave. And this has frog kick for like the tech pieces, which I really like. Um, it's just tough, man. Like water has so many good cards. Water has all these good cards and we're still missing a few. You know, I think, I actually think Desperate Times is should replace Gotcha. Like our block zones would be fucked up. We'd be missing more low blocks for high blocks and we'd have to solve that somewhere. But Desperate Times I think is actually pretty good right now. Um, I don't, you know, that's super preference and I used to shit on that card all the time, but there's just more cards, like there's more rapid speed punches happening. Um, there, there, we saw some extends on stream day one and like Void Kicks Eraser was trying to do stuff. So maybe I'm a little biased there from like Reciprocal Extend decks. Um, you know, not seeing a ton of passing the torch though. So maybe it's not, maybe it's not the play. Um, it's just, it, it's super good turn two, but it gets worse and worse as time goes on. It's bad and it can't be fixed, but I don't know. I've been getting locked down by desperate times pretty regularly recently. So maybe that's just recency bias, but uh, you do kind of have to get multiples out for it to feel really good or to have it like really early to feel good. So, you know, take, take it for what you will. I do think the thing that desperate times is really good against is double jab pummel desperate times against double jab pummel is kind of like you can force it to happen um not a lot of people play around it that way and like the plus two counters the stun two or the stun one you know pretty well in the immediacy but yeah it, it you kind of you'd have to be playing four desperate times and you'd have to know the interaction but Pretty much every deck has one card that draw, has one attack at least that draws some cards. Um, you know, Osui's live and die by exhausted exclamation right now. So that's just kind of my meta read. Other than this, this is super simple. This is very normal Osui stuff. Corey Aguilar's, you know, a very good player who's been down to just play defensive decks. You know, he's been down to block, play seven handers, play Eraserhead. So. These are the two decks I've really seen him on the most, right? Those are the decks he's known for. So, yeah, not a lot to say here that wasn't said with the Brandon Jones one, other than it's really sad that we don't get to play defense. Uh, I guess the biggest, the real difference is the sideboard. We have Toru 2 in the sideboard. So, again, we I think Corey might have been going first, actually, throughout the day. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe this is specifically for... Like the Jiro matchup, this is specifically for like a Tokoyami matchup. It's really hard to say. It could be for like a double jab pummel matchup, right? Like double jab pummel gets the plus two, you bounce it back. They don't get the bonus extension anymore, so. Um, and because of that, we actually have the invisible infiltrations, but we only have two. We only have two invincible, uh, invisible infiltrations and two tongue whips here, so I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I would love to hear his thought process on these. Like I, you know, the two cannon blasts kind of make sense. You know, sometimes you, when you got to go big, you got to go big, but I would love to hear the thought process on these. Like what is tongue whip for? What is tongue whip against, you know? Like what? What is the tongue whip tech? Is it just another low block? Like I would rather have the four invisible when I side. Like I just, uh, I don't know. I have to say, like I'm just thinking of all the decks that actually got played. So he might have been scouting a deck that didn't get played. Um, but like not having four tongue whip feels really weird. 
Like, I don't feel like having, like, a Tongue Whip is that great. Like, Tongue Whip is great as a starter and an ender. I don't know. But, Toru 2 was quite a bit of a meta pick, meta call. Especially for going second, being defensive, but they did not stand the test of time. Um... They did not, uh, the Tower Twos did not make it super far, so. Yeah, Water Asui is kind of a known entity. You can still, like, these decks are still not too, like, you know, 100% similar. The Water Asuis, I guess, are the most similar of the, you know, multiple iteration decks we've seen. Of the characters we've seen so far, you know, that uh, have multiple lists on here, but. Yeah, man, I I would love to know these decisions on these ratios. Uh, other than that, you know, Corey's had an absolutely great run. He was pretty much locked in uh, just from winning Origins, right? And then he had to show up a little bit more. Um, and then I think he actually locked in his spot with qualifying at Nats and managed to pass down an invite. So a lot of those people in the, the last couple invites can thank him probably for qualifying at Nats because sitting on a win, 25 points, that was pretty much a lock to get in. So uh, it was very nice of him to still do really well at Nationals and, uh, and pass those invites down. So congratulations to Corey. I expect to see a lot more of him in the future. He did play some universes before My Heroes, my understanding. And, uh, yeah, I expect to see a lot more seven hand size blocking from him in the future. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, the format can come back around and, and favor people like that. Because I'm a seven hand size blocker. Like, I like to block with my seven handers and protect my, my minuscule life total. So, I would like to see the meta come around on that. But, what do you guys think? Is Tongue Whip overrated now? Uh, is plus ultra plus tape just not the vibe now that... You know one with nature exists like there, there's very good reasons for these decisions and when it comes to deck building you're just you know you you are just taking some chances right you are gambling in certain ways that tape and plus ultra won't be useful because of one with nature so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below i got my chat here uh rattling off <laughs> you know their thoughts and opinions so yeah, again, once again, congratulations, 26th place to Corey. Uh, congratulations on the, the RLE win. Congratulations on qualifying through Nats anyways. And, you know, again, we expect to see a lot more from you in the future.